Part 3, Ode to a Skylark. We take up the text now, line by line. Hail to the blitz spirit, bird thou never wert, that from heaven or near it pourest thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher, from the earth thou springest, like a cloud of fire, the blue deep thou, wing, thou wingest, and singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. These are the first two stanzas. Hail to the blitz spirit. The poet begins with greetings to the skylar, calling it a blitz spirit, a happy spirit. Bird thou never wert. You were never a bird that from heaven or near it you pouring thy heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. The poet means to say, you see, kindly notice the archaic phrases. Instead of verb, he uses word. Then, thy, thou. Okay? So, he says that the skylark was never a bird. Skylark is actually a bird. But he says that the sky, you are not a bird. You were never a bird. You were some blitz spirit. You were some heavenly, a joyful spirit. You were pouring your heart, that is, producing music in profuse strains of unpremeditated art in continuous strains of unpremeditated, that is extempore, that which was not meditated earlier, that which was not planned earlier. So, here he commends the spontaneous music of the skylark. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springest, like a cloud of fire, the blue deep thou wingest, and singing still does soar, and soaring ever singest. He begins with describing the flight of the skylark. He says, as it springs from the earth, it goes higher and higher, and it springs like a cloud of fire. Suddenly when you light fire, there'll be a... Uh, there will be spark in form of a cloud and it immediately, quickly soars deep into the higher regions of the sky. And singing still does soar and soaring ever singest. As it sings, it soars, it goes higher and higher. And as it goes higher and higher, it sings. See, the last line is there for the musical effect. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun, over which clouds are brightening, thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race has just begun. The pearl Pale purple even melts around thy flight. Like a star of heaven in broad daylight, thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun. See, don't go by the word sunken. If it's golden lightning of the sunken sun, here's the description of the sunrise, early morning. As I told you, in order to appreciate uh, nature poetry, you, you should start appreciating nature. You should start loving nature. You should start looking into the deep aspects of nature, particularly the sunrise and the sunset, which have been described in full detail. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun, the sun is sunken, but there is some golden lightning 
and there are the bright clouds coming up and the poet says that the skylark floats and runs like an unbodied joy whose race has just begun look at the simile in the last stanza he used the simile like a cloud of fire here he uses the simile like an unbodied joy whose race has just begun like a like an unbodied joy like joy which has no shape no body no soul it just and the race of this kind of creature has just begun it floats and runs to the upper regions of the sky the pale purple even melts around thy flight like the star of heaven in the broad daylight thou art unseen but yet i hear thy shrill delight see when you have orange and blue color coming up it will look like purple so this a uh, phenomenon of nature it melts around thy flight here is another simile like a star of heaven suddenly it's like a star of heaven in broad daylight thou art unseen but yet i hear thy shrill delight even if the skylark is unseen it is like that star of heaven which one knows that it exists